to today's video. For those who have been following this, this is the third video that we've put out actually on natural language querying on a SQL database. This video is really the payoff. We are gonna show an end-to-end -end scenario, something that you can go pull down the code and implement in the next 15 minutes, you know, and run locally, that starts with, you know, a natural language query, and ends with an actual retrieval and a lookup in a SQL database. So stay tuned, the next 10 or 15 minutes, you're gonna see a lot. It's mostly gonna be going through the code of a sample. We're gonna go run the code. And then at the very end, I'm gonna share some tips and some things that we've learned in the course of doing this to help increase the effectiveness of the pipeline that you're building around this. So now just to remind you, what we're actually gonna be showing, I'm gonna show sort of the architecture of this and then we're gonna go look at the code. But where it starts, when you install LLMware and you pull down the Slim SQL tool, which is a small quantized text to SQL model, it also comes, you support SQLite and embedded database out of the box. The flow that we're gonna build here is there's a sample CSV. It's just a very, very simple customer table that we've actually included with kind of the instructions and the configuration for that Slim SQL model. We're gonna convert that representative CSV file into a table Table on our SQLite database that's going to be running locally. That's actually going to give us the table and the schema. And then we're going to kick off an agent process. And the agent process is going to work through a series of natural language questions that it's going to pass through the text to SQL model. It's going to pull the table schema from the SQLite database. It's going to query the database, and then we're going to get the output and the answer. So that's what we're going to go do. That's what we're going to go show you um, as we flip over to the code. So let me jump out of this PowerPoint, open up my IDE. This is an example you can find on the LLMware repository. It's just the end-to-end -end example for you know querying a SQL database using natural language. And let me start to walk through the flow of the code, and then we're going to run it because I think it'll be a lot clearer once you actually see the code running in action. So just to go to the very end, to kind of the run script, essentially what we're gonna do is we're gonna run this one script. That script, what we're gonna pass into it is a table name. And since we're gonna be running it fresh, we are giving the instruction to go create a new table. And then at the end, we're gonna delete the table. And part of the reason we really like using SQLite, and we've set it up and configured it as an experimental database, is when we're running these kinds of experiments, we'll create the table and then just immediately delete the table. Again, it keeps your test environment nice and clean, and it becomes a really easy way then to experiment with this stuff without having to worry about corrupting you know, a real database table or a real database. So let's come back and let's look at this end-to-end -end test script back up at the top. So if we're gonna create a new table, what it's gonna go off and do, it's gonna run this command right here. It's gonna pull in this customer table that we actually provide in the kit. So when you pull down the model, you're gonna get this customer table CSV. Feel free to experiment, replace with your own file. It's a very, very simple little CSV. We're gonna invoke the SQL tables class. SQL tables class then has a really helpful method to create a new table from a CSV. It's gonna convert that CSV then into a database table on our local machine. And then the real main chunk of the code we kick off our agent process. We load our SQL model. We're gonna run through a set of questions. Questions are, you know, which customers are VIP customers? What is the highest annual spend of any customer? Which customer has a very specific account number? Which customer has the lowest annual spend? And then a, a question about a very specific customer. Is Susan Swenson a VIP customer? So five very representative, typical, relatively simple, straightforward, types of questions that you may want to ask in natural language about a customer table. And then what we're going to do inside our agent process, essentially we're going to run this one method. What this method does is it asks our agent to go query the database. It takes that query, it runs it through our SQL model to convert that from text, which customers are VAP customers, into a SQL statement. It pulls the table name that we've passed into it, to, so it's constructing the right SQL against that table. And then it actually takes that next step of querying the database with that SQL statement that's come out of the model, and then it gives us that output. And the output is aggregated in the agent research list. So then at the very end, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go print out all the research from it. And then finally, the last step we're gonna see is we're gonna delete the database table, so every single time we're starting fresh. So hopefully that gives you a good idea. Let's go ahead and let's run the example. Agent is off working. It's working through each of these individual steps and it's actually done. And again, just to remind everybody, all this was running locally on a Mac. It's not even running on a GPU. And what we've got here at the very end of this process is we have the output from our five 
natural language questions that we posed. It worked through that whole pipeline. The agent journaling capability gives us a really nice step-by-step -step view so we can look at what text was converted into SQL, and it can show us all the steps that the agent went through in deriving these answers. But then at the end, it gives us this really nice output of the response that we got from the database. And what's really cool, what's really, really cool, and I'm gonna walk through some tips because it didn't happen automatically, but we got all the answers correct. So what you can see then in the database response, you know, we asked the first question, who are the VIP customers? And it converted it successfully into SQL. It went into the database. And if you go and you look at the CSV file, you can actually go line by line by line. You can see that it got all the correct answers of the names of the customers that are in fact VIP customers. The next thing, it actually looked up the maximum annual spend. It then looked up the customer with that specific account number. It provided us the customer name who had the lowest spend. And then finally, it gave us the answer to that question of whether Susan Swainson is a VIP customer. So we're five for five. We got all of these correct. Now, this is a very simple table and these are relatively simple queries. So if there's a database analyst that's watching this, you're probably laughing a little bit. You're like, guys, this is not even SQL. There's no joins, there aren't multiple complex tables. You know, my customer table has, you know, hundreds of different columns and attributes, all totally true. What we're trying to provide here is what we believe is a practical recipe to enable you to very, very quickly prototype and experiment on something that we actually believe is one of the most important pipelines to apply LLMs in a very structured way to solve real problems and start connecting with enterprise data. And then what you see here at the very end is we did, we deleted that table. And again, the beauty of it, experiment, bring it down and go create something new. All the code that I just showed you, it's all available in our repository. You can feel free. You can try your own natural language queries. You can go adapt the CSV file and really experiment and start building some of your own pipelines around um, what we believe, again, is a really, really important recipe. Now, I said that there were some tips and tricks that we wanted to share. We believe this is actually a pretty complex pipeline to get right end to end. And in thinking about any type of production use case around this, you will definitely need some safeguards on the pre-processing side, on the post-processing side, just to handle exceptions and errors and what happens if the SQL is not syntactically correct, what happens if the SQL is syntactically correct, but perhaps it has not been accurately translated into what that question was. So there's definitely a lot of work that would need to be built around this if you're gonna try to use this in production. But what we wanted to share were some of the things that we learned in the course of doing this and in really getting, again, a relatively straightforward example to work and to be 100% accurate. All right, so let's flip back over to the PowerPoint. Okay, here we are. Some key tips, some key learning lessons that we had that we think will increase the accuracy and the effectiveness as you're really fine tuning this kind of pipeline. The first area where things can go wrong is in the conversion from the CSV into the database table. Think really carefully about the data types. There can be some things that you can put in a CSV file that can make it very, very difficult to automatically translate it. Things like commas and quotes and some other syntax type characters that can make it complicated. Think carefully about the data type. So one of the things we did originally is we actually were using a monetary, kind of a decimal data type that was actually a little bit hard for us to automatically convert from a CSV. At times it was getting converted into text. At times it wasn't recognizing it as a number. So again, in this very, very simple example and a very simple little uh, function that we built here to convert the CSV to a database table, really think very carefully to make sure that the CSV data that you're laying out is very clear and clean that we're able to infer the data type. And again, keep it pretty simple in the course of doing that. The second thing, which again, may seem kind of not obvious, but it, it actually took us some time to figure this out. The text to SQL model generates much, much better results when you turn sampling off altogether. And again, you'll see another video from us that's really talking about sampling and some of the stochastic elements that come into model generation. But one of the things that we're learning is with function calling models, where you're looking for a very specific and very precise sequence of tokens, turn that random sampling, that stochastic element, turn it off altogether, and you actually get better and more consistent results. So we were preparing for this video. We would get the right results. We're like, okay, cool, let's go film this. And then the next time we would run it, the results would be wrong. And a lot of the error was related to that sampling, that the model in terms of sampling among kind of a top set of logits in the course of the probability distribution was picking not the top 
output token, and that was actually introducing some source of error. So function calling model, sampling equals false, temperature equals zero. Third thing then is there definitely will be a whole sort of mechanic around prompt query engineering as you start thinking about you know, natural language queries getting converted into SQL. There are some things that are perfectly sensible ways to say it in natural language that actually result in some ambiguity in the way that the SQL gets created. And so this is definitely gonna be a key area is how do you think about different ways perhaps of asking the same types of questions. Some are gonna to lead to the right SQL translation, some might not. And then in other cases, there might be syntactically accurate SQL. So the SQL sure, sure looks like SQL, but there was some interpretation or some ambiguity that's resulting in yes, SQL, but not actually the query that we were hoping. And then the last thing, the last sort of area I would say of slippage in this can be subtle attributes within the database itself that aren't coming out necessarily in the table schema, but again, can result in kind of leakage in this process and pipelines that ultimately aren't going to work. Very simple example is you may have as an example a value in a table that might be a yes or a no or a true or a false. Those types of things, again, may not be surfacing then because those are text attributes. They may not be surfacing actually in the table schema if the table schema is saying it's just text. As a result then, when the text to SQL model is converting it into SQL, it may again have syntactically accurate SQL and make very reasonable choices about what that potential value could be, but in fact be inaccurate because it doesn't know how it was actually encoded and captured as data elements in that database. So long story short, there are a variety of levers here that ultimately need to be tuned also, the premise that we had is we kept it really simple, relatively simple table, relatively straightforward questions. But with some of these caveats, again, we're giving an out-of-the-box recipe that you can start running this you know, in the next 15 minutes and start doing some really, really cool things, turning natural language into SQL query retrievals. So hope you've enjoyed today's video. Any questions, as always, please come check us out on Discord. Any questions, any ideas around this stuff, it's an area we're doing a lot of work in. So really welcome, again, feedback and ideas and thoughts about where we can continue to take and evolve. So again, thank you everybody. Hope everybody has a wonderful day. Take care, bye-bye.